Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Good day to all of us. Ako po si Debra Garcia and welcome to another series of lessons where you will learn not just the theories and form of the language but also the function and the usage. But before you watch this video, please make sure that you've already watched the previous series with 18 lessons in it. I put the link of the first lesson in the description box below because in that series, I discussed all the major theories that would help you understand the Filipino language from the very basic to the advanced level. So if you're ready, grab your pen and paper and let us learn all about conversational Filipino. excited to tell you that I finally found a book that would help me make better lessons for you guys. This is called Step Forward Canada, Language for Everyday Life. Of course, the lessons here are in English as well as the exercises, but I can go ahead and translate them. What I like about this book is it is designed for CLB level or Canadian language benchmarks levels three to five. So it means it is not so easy because the easy one is the CLB level one and two, and the hard one is the CLB level six to eight. So this one is just right in the middle. I also like this book because there are enough exercises that are in here, and just by doing the exercises alone, you can actually understand what is the lesson all about already. So it's like learning by doing. Now let's discuss lesson one from that book, and lesson one is about the ways to learn new words. In Filipino, we say mga paraan para matuto ng mga bagong salita. When you say ways, and this is plural with S, so we put mga. Way is paraan. So mga paraan is actually ways. To, the preposition to is para. So ways to learn. Matuto is to learn. So ways to learn. New words. New is bago. Words and this is plural, so we put mga. Mga bagong salita means new words. So, mga paraan para matuto ng mga bagong salita. So, these are things that would help you learn new vocabulary words. So, the first one is CD player. We keep it as it is because we don't translate this in Filipino. We call this CD player as well. Chart. We can use this spelling. We also call it Chart in Filipino, but we spell it like this. So T S A T A R T chart. It it sounds like C H, but it's T S. Okay, chart. Dictionario is dictionary. Okay, flashcards. We keep it as it is because we don't have a translation for that. Grupo, group, group. It's grupo. Internet, we keep it as it is. It's internet in Filipino, notebook as well. And then pares, pares is pairs. And of course, we use pictures. In conversational Filipino, we use pictures, but also we use the word litrato. The formal Filipino of the word litrato is larawan. Okay, but in conversational Filipino, we use pictures. Okay, so how do we use the CD player as a tool to learn new words? So in CD player, we can what? We can listen, right? So makinig ng CD player. Makinig ng CD. Listen to the CD, not the player, okay? Maybe we can remove the, the player, okay? The, just the CD. So makinig, listen to the CDs. Oh, or any recording okay chart maybe when you make charts of new words and then you post that um, on your wall so we say make a chart so make is gumawa gumawa na chart oh by the way these are all in their imperative form because we are instructing someone how to widen their vocabulary so these are all in the imperative form or the command form of the verbs. Dictionario. How can we use the dictionary as a tool? So to widen our vocabulary, of course, it's very obvious. We can um, find words from there. Find word is find. To find is maghana. Okay. There. Maghana. Flashcards, how do we use, how do we 
do flashcards um when you're practicing flashcards then maybe you can say use flashcards so use is gumamit gamit Okay, gumamit ng flashcard or use flashcard. Aro po, how can we make this one a tool for um, widening our vocabulary? We could say maybe mag-review. Mag-review with the group. Mag-review kasama ang grupo. Mag-review with the group. Internet, how do we... How do we use this? So we say, check the internet. So, um, actually, we can make this into a Filipino word. So we say, i-check, i-check ang internet. Notebook, what do we do with the notebook? We write down the new learned words, right? So we say, magsulat to write. Magsulat sa notebook. Pares or pairs. Pairs, how if with the group you review with the group, you do group review. For pairs, maybe we can use practice with, a, with your pair. Practice with your pair. So we say mag practice. We keep the word practice and then we add the prefix mag like this one. Mag review and then here we'll say mag practice. I find this pairs, um, practicing with the pairs, really effective because there's just the two of you and then you take turns um, practicing those new words that you learn. And then number nine, we have the pictures. How do we use pictures to aid our um, studying for new words? When you look at the pictures, you practice. Like for example, if you see a picture in the grocery store, then maybe you can identify the things in the picture. So we say, look at the picture. Root word is tingin, to look at. So we say tingnan. All right, so we'll review it. CD, we listen, makinig. Chart, we make the chart, gumawa. Dictionary or dictionary, we find words, maghana. Flashcards, we can use flashcards, so gumamit. Grupo, you can do your review with a group. Mag-review with a group. Internet, you check the internet. So, e-check ang internet. Notebook, of course, you write down the new words there. So, we say mag-sulat sa notebook. Pares or pairs, what do you do with your pair group? Then, you say mag-practice with your pair. And then, for pictures... You look at the pictures and you identify things there uh, for the new words. Then you say tingnan uh, pictures. So talking about pictures, I am going to show you a picture of students in the library. I think they're in the library. So it says, uh, larawan ng mga estudiante sa library. By the way, um, I, I mentioned earlier that when you say picture, we can use picture. But since the exercise is in the written form, then the formal terminology of the word picture or literato is used. So in the exercise, it says larawan. It means picture. Mga estudiante. Estudiante is student. Mga estudiante means students. So it's um, plural. Sa library. We are going to keep the word library because the formal term, Filipino term of library is silid. Aklatan, but no one's using that. We're just using that in the books. But for the exercises, though it is written, we are going to keep the word library to mean library because that's more common than the uh, Filipino terminology for the library. Write T, isulat ang T, write T if the pahayag or statement is tama. Tama is correct. And then M, if the statement is mali. Mali is incorrect or wrong. So instead of saying true or false, we say correct or wrong. 
Okay, before we look at the picture again and decide which of these five statements are tama and which are the male, let us make sure that we understand each sentence first. So, sentence number one says, Gumagamit ng flashcards ang isang estudiante. Gumagamit from the word gamit means use. So, use flashcards the student. What does it mean in English? One student is using flashcards. Now, let, later I'm going to show you the picture with each statement and then you decide whether this one is true or this one is false or this one is tama or this one is mali. So, one of the students is using flashcards. Okay, number two. Nakikinig ng CD ang isang grupo ng estudyante. Nakikinig, to listen. So, listening, CD, isa again, one group, grupo. One group of students is listening a CD. Let's go back to the picture later and see if this is tama or mali. Hinahanap niya ang salitang chalk sa diksyonaryo. Hinahana, looking or finding, finding niya, he or she, okay? He or she is looking for or finding the word, ang salita, the word chalk in the dictionary. Number four, gumagawa siya ng chart. Gumagawa is making. Siya again, he or she, he is making chart and then last one is nagsusulat sa notebook ang isang pares na estudyante nagsusulat sulat means to write nagsusulat is writing in on notebook the one isa one pares one pair of student so let's see if a pair of student is writing on the notebook. If you notice, we start our sentences with the verbs. Remember in the previous series, if you are writing the word, if you are writing the sentences in the formal written Filipino form, we start with the subject because that's how it is in English. The format is SVO, subject first, verb, and then object. But that's what we do in formal Filipino as well. We do subject, verb, object. But these sentences are in conversational Filipino. So we always start with the verbs. And these verbs actually are all in the present form because we are saying something, telling something, facts about the, what the things that we can see in the picture. So these are all in the present tense. Okay, so look at the picture carefully. In Filipino, we say, Tingnan ang larawan ng maigi. Isulat ang T kung ang pahayag ay tama at M naman kung ang pahayag ay mali. Una, or number one, gumagamit ng flashcards ang isang estudyante. Tama o mali? Number two, o pangalawa, nakikinig ng CD ang isang grupo ng estudyante. Tama o mali? Pangatlo, or number three, hinahanap niya ang salitang chalk sa diksyonaryo. Tama o mali? Pang-apat o number four, gumagawa siya ng chart. Tama o mali? Pang-lima o number five, nagsusulat sa notebook ang isang pares ng estudyante. 
Tama o mali? Okay, let's go back to the sentences and then let's decide which of these sentences are tama and which ones are mali. I hope you will get the same answer. So, number one, gumagamit ng flashcards ang isang estudyante. In the picture, have you seen someone using a flashcard? There is one, right? The girl. So, uh, we say this is, this is tama or correct. Number two, nakikinig ng CD ang isang grupo ng... Estudiante, there's just one lady there that's listening to the CD, not a group of students. Hindi, not grupo ng estudiante. It's not a group, right? There's just one lady there. So we say this one, number two, is mali or incorrect or wrong. This is a wrong statement. Number three, hinahanap niya ang salitang chalk sa diksyonaryo. Have you seen that person on the very side of the picture? He's looking for something and in the bubble it says chalk, right? So it's correct. It's it's tama. He's looking for the word chalk in the dictionary. So that's tama. Number four, gumagawa siya ng chart. Have you seen this old guy um, doing the chart on the side, left side of the picture? So yeah, he's doing a he's making a chart. So this one is tama again. Number five, nagsusulat sa notebook ang isang pares ng estudyante. I think there's only one guy who's writing on the notebook and the guy across him, sitting across him, is um, looking at the pictures, right? So there's only one guy who's writing on the notebook. So this statement, this pahayag is mali. So it is wrong. I hope you got the same answers. If not, don't worry, we are going to do more exercises in our next lessons. And that is all for today, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope you will not forget the vocabulary words that you learned from this lesson so that in the next lesson, if we need to recycle some words, you are already very familiar with them. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. See you again next time. Bye.